Here in English, so it would be not a problem. I, there, the offer is still there. Okay, I can have a talk with you. I can have a presentation. Um, it's my first Joomla Congress, and it's my first talk, so therefore my knees are kind of weak. <laughs> I had a bad night, a train, so I'm tired. My uh, English is not my real language, my mother tongue, so please be kind. Um, I have a story to tell about a project um, I lead, I'm leading actually, I still lead it. Um, it is um, a going on pro process since uh, three years, four years, well, a long time. Anyway, um, maybe I start with me or um, first a short summary of all this, what I'm going to tell you, what I'm going to talk about. I'm talking about my uh, working space, my, my area of working, what I do, what my work is. I will talk about how I started a project with Joomla in public school system within Salzburg land. Um, I will talk a lot about how I put together a team. Well, actually, I don't, I didn't put it together, it came together. And um, uh, I will tell you how to manage a large number of Joomla sites with uh, um, nearly no work, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, um, a deployment sy system um, was uh, um, developed for this project. I will talk more about um, human things, about teacher, teachers, um, about training, a training process we, we had in the last years. And last of all, I will make my personal summary and you have time to ask questions. Um, about me, yeah, there it is. Uh, my name is Christian Macher, Christian Macher of Gut Deutsch. Um, um, I'm 36 years old, years old. I'm not a developer, I'm not a designer, I'm, uh, yeah enthusiastic Joomla user, I would say. And I worked as a teacher, as a primary teacher from, uh, for kids from six, eight, six to, to 10 years old. So no IT um, experience since, I don't know, yeah, since uh, four years ago, six years ago, six years ago. And um, then I changed um, to being an IT consultant. You may ask how that worked. <laughs> well, um, in Land Salzburg, there is a special kind of uh, a special kind of teacher. Um, there are 25 persons right now who. Um, help schools with all the IT systems. They're part-time teacher and part-time IT people. So I'm one of them. And we manage to, uh, well, we did everything. We did everything. I, I don't know, m maybe, maybe um, it is about costs because teacher costs less than IT professionals. Um, maybe it started with teachers who um, were interested, uh, uh, who were glad about working with uh, IT things, computers, networks, and so there, um, this kind of work um, did develop. Twelve years ago, um, some of these teachers, long before I attempt this um, kind of job, um, some teachers thought it would be nice to have a network between schools. And they uh, submitted to the authorities and said, we need more IT in school and we just need it very um, planned uh, and uh, not, not just there and there and this school uh, does other things than this school. We need to have a concept. So they support, uh, um, put it to the authorities and they said yes. 
um, this is a good idea. And they founded the Bildungsnetz, the Salzburger Bildungsnetz. Um, they put some money into it. And we have a network. Since then, we had a, we had a network between schools, uh, which is connected to the internet, um, but has special add-ons just for schools like filtering or um, actually it's nothing special it's just for schools it's yeah that's the thing it growed uh, that's a that's the story how it, it it growed I have colleagues as I mentioned um, but before I show you a little map <laughs> where this is where all of this happens I'm talking about Austria the little 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 country in the heart of Europe um, and there about the Bundesland of Salzburg, which is even smaller. Um, we have, I don't know, 300 schools, about 300 schools um, in the public school system. Um, and we have 25 people who do this work. Um, I myself, uh, turned away from the teacher's desk and I do only IT support. We have two hours a week per school. So that's the rough number. And sometimes school one needs more time and school two needs less. So over the year is, um, it's pretty okay. Um, well, the keynote speaker I have to mention that the keynote speaker said time is more important than money and um, I have to admit that's true I'm still working as teacher I have my big holidays um, and all the stress focused on less time all right next point when I started to be um, this kind of teacher, this IT betreuer, um, I had nothing, uh, no knowledge about the web. I had a modem, something like that. I dialed in, yeah, usual stuff. Um, but one of the responsibilities of this um, work is to manage schools' websites. And I started with HTML. <laughs> Back then, I started with front page. <laughs> and you see, um, many, uh, many, many schools didn't have uh, more than one HTML site, nothing else. Just the basic information, name of the school, the email address, um, that's it. So we didn't have time to, uh, we still don't have time to uh, put all the stuff on the site. So what to do? I was not satisfied with this. And um, when I started, I um, started with eight schools, supporting eight schools. So I started to uh, make some HTML sites and they kept sending me information per email and I put that all in the stuff on the site and I, I just choose that's not the way I wanted to do it. So um, I, I started searching and <laughs> just leave, doesn't matter. <laughs> Track four. Yeah, Flexi content is in the big room downstairs. This is room four and not track four. <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you know, I, I, I'd like to attend there too, but I can't. <laughs> I know. So I started with Mambo. I don't know how I uh, managed to get it to work on my laptop. Um, however, um, it worked and I saw the uh, potential of this kind of website management and I wanted to do um, something. I wanted to bring my school's website to life. 
not just email address and name, yeah, to life. Um, well, the thing is, uh, most of my clients, I call them that way, um, they don't know what to use, what, what, what make use of, uh, how to make use out of the web. They, uh, yeah, set it up, put my name in the web, put my email address in the web, that's it. So um, I, I'm gifted in imagine great things. <laughs> and so I imagined what I could do using a CMS system. Um, I want to, uh, I want the website to be a tool of daily basis work to communicate between um, the public and the inside of school. I want to, uh, uh, teachers to communicate via email, which wasn't uh, um, very popular when I started. Um, I wanted uh, uh, headmasters to show what's going on in their schools because, um, you know, teachers um, are said to be lazy. Well, and I, I know that's not true. So, we wanted to, or I wanted uh, to bring school websites to life. Um, back then, I met a nice guy who was into uh, Linux and MySQL and Apache. So we set up a small 300 megahertz desktop machine as our first web server and brought two schools online with a Mambo site. Well, I put mm, many hours in training two teachers um, how to use the system, but I'm sorry to say I wasn't very successful because, well, after the keynote of Igor, I don't have to explain <laughs> why. We have no geeks at schools, no one uh, using fancy stuffs stuff things and and uh, uh, Twitter what's Twitter what, what, what is what is uh, uh, I'm sorry a way of wasting time, of wasting time. yeah you know the point is uh, some of my clients still don't know what is copy and paste so and if they know they do it with the mouse and not with the key shortcuts um, well I have to admit this didn't change till now um, in rough numbers, small numbers, you will see. Well, I wasn't successful, nevertheless, I decided that this was the way to go because I myself didn't want to uh, update every site. Um, so I thought about making a project out of it and uh, submitted some uh, some papers to my to the uh, school officials, and they gave me the green light to make this project and to uh, yeah walk on, go further on. My colleagues, um, well, they set up years ago all these HTML things for every school, for our 300 school, one HTML site. And they didn't know what was going on inside me and um, my work. Um, I talked to them. Um, the time came, I made a presentation, and nearly everyone at, of, of these 25 persons wanted to be in that project team and wanted to work that way. They wanted to learn, they wanted to do all the things, and um, they wanted to be part of it. So I had a lot of people, 25, to uh, establish some sub-teams, what I was thinking. You know, I have no education in project management, too. I just started out and I yeah. got into it and it got bigger, bigger. And um, so I was talking to professional people, but anyway, it was up to me to form the group. So we uh, put some uh, subgroups into charge and um, we had some main focus themes. We had the standard installation. I wanted to put a standard installation package for our schools together. Um, we had 
some people working on templates or starting to work on templates, which was a fault. Um, I'll tell you why just later on. Um, marketing, how to spread the news to schools, and so on. Um, maybe interesting, I don't know what kind of business you are into. Um, maybe interesting for you will be how, we, how the standard installation um, grew. grew. We put some packages in it. Garant? Garant? Yeah. yeah. Question. Uh, why is it different uh, when you include uh, implementing the website in the project uh, from your first approach to the two schools? Because a project doesn't make it easier for the end user. Still, still doesn't know how to copy and paste. I'm sorry, I didn't get that question. Again, please. You first started with the website. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. You had problems with the end users who were supposed to maintain the website. Yeah. Okay. It didn't work. Yeah. So you started the project. Yes. And you gave the structure, the sub team standard, etc. Yes. But that still doesn't change the fact that yeah. the end user doesn't know how to put the place. Well, um, I'll come to that a little later. I, I, the, the key point was I didn't want to manage 18 websites mm -hmm. or 20 websites. So I, need, I needed a, a, a different way to do it. So the th one thought was, um, okay, if they don't, don't do it, I can use Mambo or Joomla later on to uh, do all the, the work faster than putting HTML together. So I started the project despite of um, not the, 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 the failing su success with my test sites. Um, and these kind of uh, work, putting together a standard station, it, 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 it was, um, well, the test sites uh, worked on while we were starting the project. So it, it's not a, it's, it's not a, how, how, how you say it? Um, incremental. incremental. Um, well, we, I didn't start the project um, stopping the test sites. Because the test sites work on, I started the project while the test sites were online and we were working that way. So, G events calendar, um, calendar, calendar. Um, it's a, I don't know, do you know it? Do you know it? I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah. You know it, oh, good. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, nothing to say about it. it's a good, it's a good, <laughs> Extension, thank you, Garant. Um, we ha we wanted to have a, a tool to manage pictures, yeah. And we found the Joomla Flash Uploader by Michael Dempfle very very useful. Um, back then we were working with 1.0 uh, version 1.0 from from Joomla, um, and there is not a real possibility to manage pictures in an easy way. So we decided to put in the flash uploader. Um, my content, I don't know if you know this extension, it's a front-end extension where all the authors or publishers can only see their um, submitted content. Yeah. So you, we, we focused on front-end because we thought, okay, back-end is a different story and we will bring uh, advanced users to the back-end but the normal teacher should be at the front end and therefore we, we put in this um, piece of software to have an overview of all the articles. Um, and we used G GCE Editor, um, which turned out to be a perfect piece of software. But um, I didn't realize it back then, it had too many functions. So. You know, let's change that. I'm sorry? You know you can change that. I know. I, I knew it. I could change it. I could have changed it back then, but I didn't because I was a geek. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, next thing was uh, the Bildungsnetz provider uh, changed their web server. Till then, they don't offer MySQL services. So, a part of my job was 
to turn uh, to, to move every single HTML site from one web space to another web space and to do that, to do that um, we need um, official OK and for that we made a, a survey um, telling the stories we wrote to the headmasters and asked if they want to change to a CMS system. And while we were planning that, we thought we would get about 30 schools maximum who would be interested in that um, kind of managing their website. When the survey came back, <laughs> there was a, a slight little um, possibility to get out of this project, but I didn't take it. <laughs> because when <laughs> we get the result, we saw that there were about 130, 120, 130 schools who wanted to join and wanted to use Joomla. I'm sorry? Almost 50%. Almost 50%, right. So we sat there and from this uh, time we knew we needed a deployment or a managing system for such a large numbers, number of sites. Um, we um, put in a documentation and help team. Um, <laughs> and the funny, the funny part, now I, can love, I, can, I have to smile about that, because um, it's so long ago. <laughs> um, none of my colleagues had experience with Joomla, so, and they should be writing a documentation. Well, I told them, do it in Joomla, so you learn uh, the system. They did it in Microsoft Word, <laughs> um, and gave me the script, and I said, well, well done. Um, put it into small articles uh, on a website, on a Joomla website, and they did it. Um, so we, get, we got a nice, a nice collection of small articles. Um, but it took some time, and um, I'm happy that now it's, it's, it's a really pretty uh, collection of articles. External help, as I mentioned, we needed help um, with such a large number of sites, and I was glad to um, attend the workshop with Alex Kempkens in Munich, Mambo workshop, and there I asked him about this problem and he said, okay, you have to do something about it. I know a way. And well, about the deployment system, I will um, inform you just in a, min in a couple of minutes. As you, uh, as you saw, or as you, um, yeah, as you saw, we had some weaknesses within all uh, this work. And I want to be honest, it's no problem. We had a weakness called subversion. I don't know. I guess you know subversion. You too? I know what subversion means, but I don't understand what you mean. Okay. Subversion is a, um, a version control system. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Okay. And Alex told me and I was a little bit naive, and Alex was the big one, uh, who knows all about this of their de development processes, and he told me, we need, we need to work with the subversion system because we need to track our versions of the standard installation. One uh, um, small change and next version, you know that. Well, I said, okay, let's do it, I try it. I will learn that, I, if I have, I will learn it. And I, had a hard time to learn it. The even harder time was to get my colleagues into subversion. Um, and I remember one session with all of my colleagues, 20, and we uh, tried to learn the tagging or forging process, forging, yeah and they made a new tag not only from one folder but from the whole repository. And then the second 
colleague uh, made another tag of the whole repository. And we're sitting there and I nearly cried because um, everyone was really frustrated and really, really, um, not angry, but yeah, it was a, a disappointment. Well, um, we still work with subversion, but um, only a few people, not all of us. So that was the end of that story. We had a lack of clarity. Um, as you may imagine, all those teachers working as IT supporter are kind of geeks. So we didn't know what is Joomla. Is it for big sites or is it for small sites? I know you can do everything, but we had to make a standard installation for a virtual standard school. So what to do? And we always discussed, should we do that? Uh, should we put that into the standards? No, we don't need it. Uh, so there was no clear picture. Um, two years, uh, uh, after two years standing here, I know that all the, the, the Joomla can do everything and I know how to do it, but back then there was a big discussion process. What, what is this all about? Um, lack of coordination. Well, the help or documentation team made screenshots from the standard installation, writing their texts and their help. Uh, um, and when they logged in the next day, the menu point was on a different place. And the function was moved because everything was, was, was parallel. <laughs> and that was um, very frustrating. Um, and we didn't have the flexibility to uh, deal with these issues because most of my colleagues didn't know the system very well. I had a lack of knowledge, I still have a lack of knowledge, <laughs> um, and um, I made many wrong estimations. I said, okay, we set a milestone two, two months from now on, fix that, and it took four. So these are the things we were struggling with. The deployment system um, was developed parallel while we were doing all this stuff. And well, I don't want to go into details, but the idea was or is to roll out many Joomla sites in one go, in different web spaces, and not only to deploy that um, package, um, also to update the package later on, because that's, yeah, should be a key feature. Um, it works most of the time. <laughs> now, it works, it works, and it didn't work when we needed it. I remember one day before the first course, there were no sites online. And we um, decided that at the courses with our teachers, the people should work within their deployed sites to have a um, result right after the course. So some screenshots, we have some ta a task manager, we have a project manager, a website manager, and we have all our schools listed with uh, URLs and um, with created date and modified date. Um, we have, um, first we had a single package with all our components. Um, later on, Alex, and I guess you, Terian, decided to uh, puzzle, uh, puzzleize, puzzle? I don't know, uh, these package into small uh, sub -package packages. So we could update one package. Maybe um, you want to know more about this system, then you have to ask Terian. Uh, no, it's going to be. It's a separate application that runs on a central server that is written in Java, not not a human okay. application. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Well, it looks like kind of Jumba, but yeah, it's not. But it's borrowed some of the style, the lists, and the tabs, just as a convenient getting it up and running quickly. Well, it's still under development. I guess it's not red finished. I don't know. For for now, it's. Hmm? It's mainly it's basically ready for you guys. I know. I know. Okay, so the process of teaching our teachers. The plan was to have two teachers each school uh, uh, managing their website and we planned um, a, a rather huge event. Um, within five days <laughs> we trained with nine trainers, 15 courses, four hours per course, 69 schools and about 200, and pe 200 people. Um, we wanted to be at the big event, and it was a part successful event. <laughs> um, what did we teach? Ah, yeah. The point is, the point is, after that, there were more teachings and more courses, um, and there are still courses. So we taught mainly front-end publishing. So no back-end, no front, just front-end publishing. Therefore, we decided to make every teacher a publisher, which is fine because we have schools with four teachers, so nothing can go wrong if one of, the, of, of those teachers published the, the articles. Um, we also have um, schools with, I would say, uh, 10 or 12 classes with more teachers. Still there, two or three people are publishers and they um, are in charge of keeping their website up to date. One key feature of Joomla was very hard to teach. It was about sections and categories. I don't know which experience do you, ha you have uh, to put that thinking into uh, the mind of a customer. Um, I, had, I had a rough time to, to understand, but well, when you understand it, it's very clear and it's very useful. But back then, they always came from which menu point do I have to? Uh, how is that working? So we had to explain and make it very clear, you don't have to manage menus, you don't have to manage layout, you don't have to manage colors, nothing. Just write your content. And it's quite hard for some, um, someone who is enthusiastic and wants to do something. Uh, and we taught um, how to upload pictures and manage pictures with the Joomla Flash Uploader. Um, I talked to my colleagues three days ago, three, three days ago, um, about, the, uh, uh, about those courses, and they said most of the time uh, they taught not issues which were Joomla related. They taught standard computer stuff, like managing uh, files. Um, you have to know we don't have geeks in schools, we just have simple users, which is very, very boring sometimes, but it's the reality. So, um, have a question? No. Oh, I was gonna tell some funny stories about that. But okay, well, just let me finish that, then I, I'm interested in your funny stories. <laughs> One point, uh, they always try to copy and paste word text. Well, I guess it's all over the world the same topic, but, and they, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really confusing. <laughs> Tell a story. Oh, I agree, lots of the training that we do, it's answering questions like, I've, I've downloaded a picture, where's it gone on my computer? <laughs> They're browsing through my documents, or they, lo they lose it on their computer. Or even questions like, what does upload or download mean? 
Yeah. I would say 65 percent. We we had we had um, um, teachers age 20 to 45, something like that, and for sure younger people are more used to that technology. But most of them, well, uploading uh, file shrinking, picture shrinking, or something like that. That was the topic or the topic topics. Um, there was something else. Well, maybe it comes it comes back. Um, beside of this, we tried to uh, teach them how to lose Joomla properly. Properly? Properly. Uh, how to make the most benefit out of it. Working together. We uh, wrote uh, newsletter <coughs> emails to show them you don't have to do it alone. You can do it <coughs> as two or three or five persons. Um, we tried to make clear that Joomla is not MS Word. Um, you know, teachers tend to be a little bit picky. Picky, I don't know if this is the right word, but they want to be very, um, want to have very uh, um, special requirements. This has to be red and this has to be green and that has to be yellow. To tell them that you don't have to do that because it makes no sense on the web. Uh, it's a hard, it was a hard training process for me too <laughs> and for them. So we always tell, told them it's as simple as MS Word, just write your text. But then they came with beautiful design documents and said, I want to put that into web. And we had to say, well, that's not about, that's, that's, that's not possible because web is different. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Why? I can make a HTML site of, of this uh, Word document. Um, we had, we, we made that clear, but still then you have an editor, GC, with too many functions. We didn't put them away, my fault. Um, still, what you see is not what you get. So um, we had to tell them, don't use too much formatting. You don't need it. You need headings. Well, what are headings? Such stories. Um, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> you know, course situation, 20 people online, and the uh, um, trainer tells something on the screen or on the blackboard, whatever, and so, uh, instantly, um, after five, six, seven minutes, where is my text? So we had to train them to work constantly and then save. Apply button. Take the apply button. Please use the apply button. Frustrating, but yeah, a learning process. Yeah, um, it's a little bit funny because um, teachers tend to correct textes, te texts. Uh, um, when people write something, um, they correct it. Well, and they say, man, that's too short. You have to tell a story. You have to tell a story. And we had to tell our teachers, web is about telling stories. They would say one sentence and 65 pictures. Still, there is kind of a picture tells more than a word philosophy in many of our sites, but we tried to tell them you need to have text to be found under a specific topic in Google or wherever. So this was one topic. And then, and that's a key point, <laughs> section categories, and this point is very uh, tied together. Um, what should I tell? Uh, what to write about? Um, we had a, we still have a, um, a hard time to connect web with real life. When I come to my schools and I see all the beautiful drawn pictures of children or see work, uh, some projects going on, interesting things, and I don't find anything on the website, I always say, hey, why don't you write about that? And they say, oh, yeah, I didn't think about it. So we needed to tell them tell what you're doing in schools. 
Okay. We are still teaching. Summary. And this was very good to see for me on Friday when I got the numbers. We right now have 109 schools online. We started with 130, but some got away, said don't use the system. Um, we have 109 schools online. That's a big number. It's a good number for me. Um, I have to say, I need to look for the clear numbers here. Okay, here we are. Um, actually, Twenty-five don't use the system. They are just on the paper. Um, some of them started right now and we have not, not a course. So they are waiting to use the system. But 14 use the system very, very seldom, which means just one article or two articles a year, which is inactive for me. But um, we have 40 sites or six, six, uh, 70 sites really using the, the system, which is a great amount. Um, 40 with a single user, one person at school uses regularly, means one article a month or one article in two months, and 30 multi-user sites um, and then you can have sites from three articles a week. So it's a very, very good number in comparison to where we start. Many of those single user sites started with Joomla and had, um, um, uh, they had bef before they had nothing, just one HTML. So it's quite successful and I'm proud of, proud of my schools <laughs> that they do it. Um, good. Conclusions. To keep that project going, to keep people using Joomla, we need to uh, offer constant trainings. We realized if we don't offer trainings, they stop using it. Support and trainings. You have to go there and say, what is your problem? You heard the keynote. Um, you have to be constantly in contact and tell them, hey, you can do that that way or do it that way. It will be better, easier, and so on. Um, <laughs> I realized changes need time. Well, we started five years ago, four, four, five years ago with Mambo for myself. Uh, um, and four years ago with the project. So there is plenty of headroom. We have still schools, they have no Different templates. And we need to, uh, we, we didn't. Converting all of those to 1.5 is not good. What? Converting all of those to 1.5 is not good. Is not good, no. Nah, but we have to do it somehow. And um, we also made a, um, I, I have to do it, I have to say it for myself. I made it a, 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 a mistake by putting out a standard template and advising my colleagues to modify it. And they're not really, um, including myself, not really into CSS, so we just put code on the bottom of the list to change the uh, layout or something. And so we have 100, 100 sites uh, in no structure. So we are not in the, in the process to put structure in a new template, to puzzleize, to, to, yeah, separate, right. And we are right on track with that. And um, next school year, autumn, we start to build up every single template with a new basis, and then hopefully <laughs> the update process will work. An idea that in JFX, the latest version, we have a layout editor tool. Mm -hmm. 
So for the events detail page, mm -hmm. you get a widget widget editor. You can choose what field you want to yeah. do well. And it strikes me that you can do the same thing with a site template. I know. You could actually have a generic template with an editing tool yeah. that allows schools to customize it, but yeah. it's still actually the same template. Yeah. That would be a perfect solution. That, that's what yes. uh, Concrete 5 does that. Right. And uh, Drupal Gardens. Lots of people are thinking that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, all I can invest is time. There is, uh, as you can imagine, um, <laughs> two less money from the government yeah. for this. Yeah. So I, I, we, we, what we did is we uh, made a new template, 1.5, and uh, uh, cut it into chunks, object oriented CSS. And now we're building up a database on flexi content, which <laughs> couldn't be at the session um, on flexi content um, with all the tags, uh, and we want to, to make puzzles so we can. Uh, build new templates out of puzzles, ex ex existing puzzles. So that's the way right now we try to help ourselves because we, we don't have time to invest and we don't have the knowledge to invest in such a editing tool which would be yeah. great. Yeah. And then you choose for uh, like to 1.6? Yeah. Um, right I now we... Is it should be a lot easier. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, somewhere I read there is no difference in uh, between 1.5 and 1.6 templates. There is a difference, but I think it's not more difficult than going from 1.0 to 1.5. A lot easier. It is a lot easier. Yeah, but our components things don't work out of the box. Yeah, yeah, you know, I know. There's, there's I know. I, I'm just talking about templates, yeah. which is it, which is a question. If 1.6 is there in, uh, I don't know, September? Well, I heard it won't be. So I, I think it'll be okay. there, but it won't be something you'd want to put on an active site. OK, it's there right now, too, but yeah. in a, a status you can't use, really. So and it the, would be the, perfect the, to. Even if it's ready, the components will be late. Yeah. It takes. Uh, the new version of Drupal is coming, but people are saying, when it's ready, six months for everything to be updated. Yeah. Uh, there's still lots of 1.0 1, 1 stuff around. Yeah. Well, September. That's a, so the situation is we want to get, and that's, that's another story. Um, this is not my only work. Right now, in this school, within this school year, we moved a whole um, man, teacher managing system from uh, local installations in schools, 300 local installations, to one big web services web service. So that was um, horrible work. Yeah, with a new uh, uh, um, system we, have, we had to educate our teachers and our, so the move from 1.0 to 1.5 gives us the possibility to connect special data from this um, teacher managing system to Joomla. And so I need to update to 1.5 first and after that 1.6 would be nice. And then we were talking about flexi components, flexi access. And you uh, choose that route. And you make it more difficult. Now, we, yeah, but I have a one isolated site, not a school site, where I put all the uh, CSS uh, junks. And this thing I did with flexi content. Uh, Schools don't get flexi content, they don't need it. Well, so can, I, so can I add a few more questions and observations? No, yeah, please. Right? Yeah. It's obviously going to rush off. No, 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 no. Uh, this is actually not, well, it's slightly related to your project, but not the technical side, but actually about schools, teachers, and pupils, and websites. Because mm. my daughter's school is a small school, you know, very small school. And um, I've worked with the head there to try to get them to get their site. I read it on yeah. your site. And, you know, it just takes. takes a lot of time to get around to doing it, and, and they, they use my, my sort of publisher and they won't be able to copy paste and it doesn't work as they want. But you know, a lot of things I feel that can be done 
up on school sites, which they agree with, but just haven't got around to, is pupil-driven content. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have children who are 10 and 11 years old, you know, a lot of what they do is about writing, or, mm -hmm. or they're, they're creating computer-driven art, or they're, they're generating artwork or mm -hmm. stuff. You know, obviously there are privacy issues about taking children, photos of children, but you can have photos of their artwork or copies of their written work mm -hmm. on the site, and it becomes a showcase for the school. Mm -hmm. Parents are proud, mm -hmm. it drives parents to the school website, it drives, you know, it, it be becomes a way of getting content. So, I'm not, you, you didn't mention that, is that something that is actually happening on some of your sites? Well, let me just go back to uh, that thing here. And I connect it to one of the last sheets. Here we go. Yeah. That's the key point. You're right. You're totally right. And I would love to see that. Um, right now, we, uh, I was all, always thinking about it. But still, um, we had one try on one big school well, um, from uh, they had Hauptschule, they had uh, grade five to eight. Um, it wasn't very successful because of the teachers, because um, I always and, and and that's kind of true. I always get the the, the impression that um, at least our teacher in, in in the schools I I can see it um, are kind of under pressure by all the stuff um, they should do additional. So that's the main point why we didn't emphasize this. Yeah. So um, I would love to see children working with that because they, they do it in their spare time. Yeah. They always, they use all the I web stuff. Time, I don't know how the school system works in, in Austria, but you know, my daughter's school, all the junior children, so the seven to 11 year olds, they all mm. have laptops. And, you know, well, they, no way. They, they write, they write in, in Word. And they really? Create art, doc, pictures with we have really in our system. They there are special IT schools. Right. Uh, um, they have a, a main focus on, on, on this technology, and they or uh, IT class. So they have laptops, but most people uh, pupils they don't use. Um, they write with the hands with right. their hands. So um, it's, it's differ it differs from school to school. Um, and we didn't put it in our program right now. Yeah. But on a long view, you can't get around it. Yeah. That's, that's clear. And then one other question. Yeah, you sure. Um, have you thought about the possibility of doing this implementation of one website in a completely different way, which is having one website and one server running on lots of different domains and using two or three plugins that manage mm -hmm. the users, the templates, and the categories and the, the galleries and the events and things. So actually, you go with one, one, yeah. with one domain and you get one site, you have a different domain, you get a completely different site, but it's actually the same Google installation. Yeah. Um, it's, it was one question when we start with 1.0. I know it couldn't be done. So now we have the situation, um, and I didn't think about I, I I should change that. I don't know. It, it would be maybe it would be more easier to manage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, for sure. Um, for myself, I I have to say I I won't I wouldn't have the knowledge to do it. Yeah. So it sounds as if multi sites is a big problem. Handling 109 websites in Joomla, updating them all. That's pretty much your key problem. Uh, I don't know. You, do, you, you just have to update one if you make a multi site installation. Oh, so you guys have a fairly efficient multi site. No, there's, there's, what, what's happened at the moment is there's a management server which uses XML RPC to send updates, and it updates all the separate. We have 109 databases, 109 FCP accounts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and the 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 idea was to put all in one site. To manage it would be easier, 
But I don't know, uh, templates and all this stuff, if this, I don't know. I, I, I can't I, imagine. I, 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 can, I can see technically that it would not be difficult to write. It would probably involve three or four plugins and uh, okay. to manage the components and yep. to manage the users on the sites. Yeah. And you could set it up just to, to have a single web server running in hundreds and nine websites. Would be okay. Yeah. Would be okay. I mean, we have to talk that, talk that through or go into details yeah. um, because we. I don't want to stop at 109, I want to stop at 300. <laughs> and um, w the connection between the, the teacher administration web services and the um, Joomla websites of the different schools are an issue because I have uh, 109 timetables to import or 109 you know, whatever information from there. I don't know if this is possible and yeah, has to be has to be considered. Yeah. You would do it that way. You know, with, with hindsight, I think that might be an easier in your specific situation, because you, you have you have very tight control on what people can and can't do. So individual sites cannot install Mr. cannot install their own No. They you know they, they're basically held out. So you couldn't do 109 different sites. Mm -hmm. Because you in a sense have 109 the same site, mm -hmm. with different contents and with different templates. Mm -hmm. I think that could be done fairly easily mm -hmm. within one general like size installation. Well, the plan. 109 completely different sites, but they're only installing their own components. There's uh, no way. You know. Well, the plan Alex and me were discussing from the start on is to uh, offer different uh, additional components. Because one side maybe wants to have a newsletter system, yeah, the other side the doesn't want to have it. Um, we, we didn't get to that yeah. point till now. So it's still uh, hoovering somewhere in the air, the idea to offer additional components to special schools. I don't know. I've been playing with the new WordPress multi-site system. It would be, it does exactly what you guys want. Uh -huh. so okay. Hopefully we can get something like that in Joomla. In okay. 1.7, I guess. 1.7. <laughs> and that has, that has separate management. You can break down the management for each of the separate sites. Yeah, users, plugins, all sorts. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're going to have to do that to catch up. Well. I, I, I tend to take what is there <laughs> because I have no, no other option. So for now, I have 109 sites and I don't know how, uh, how to import that in one database, something like that would be, yeah, we have to think about that. I don't know if, yeah, it's so okay. The two big problems with this project were usability and multi-sites. Mm -hmm. Would you say those were the two big? Um, well, multi-sites was not really my problem. It was more yours and the, uh, this of Alex. Because um, he made, uh, he put 20 sites on the evening before the course per FTP <laughs> online. Uh, but now it works. Um, so multi-site is not, not a problem anymore. Okay. Um, we will see how this update process will work now. This is a big story in the next few months. Um, we had the, the, the biggest problem is how to motivate, give motivation, and uh, yeah, usability. Well, so, like the 65% chart, the main problem is not Joomla, but yeah. just people in general. Yeah. Questions? Okay. Well, in uh, when I came here, I was wondering why I'm here. At least for three people, I was. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I had. I look at my talk and I think, oh, I wish I could go to the other one. I must go to FlexiContent. I wanted to go to FlexiContent too. So I'm sorry. 
I have to mention those. I really have to mention them because without them, nothing would have worked. Here we go. <laughs> and thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Good talk. Thank you. I mean, thank you. Thank you for coming. No, no, it was good. Good to see the, uh, you know, what you're